Organizing for what we want, building collaborative strategies, and learning better ways of relating to one another and the planet. Adrian Mary Brown talked about all that and more when I met with her recently in Detroit. She's a social justice facilitator, a pleasure activist, and the author of Emergent Strategy, Shaping Change, Changing Worlds. She's also the co-editor of Octavia's Brood, science fiction from social justice movements. Here's Adrian Mary Brown. Emergent strategies are ways of looking at the world, the natural world um, that we're a part of, and searching for collaborative efforts. Like, where does collaboration happen? Where is right relationship happening between humans and the planet, between different parts of the planet? And what can we, as a species, learn about how to be in right relationship with each other and with the planet that we're living on? We're filming this in September, and We've just come through a week where there were three hurricanes, an earthquake, a potential tsunami. Um, There was flooding, there's droughts, there's a fire raging the entire West Coast. At the same time, all the news that's coming out of the White House is devastating for our folks. We have people who are like, DACA is the thing that has kept my family together, the thing that has allowed me to be in the place that I'm from. Everything feels like it's so heavy and so intense. And how do we survive this moment? It doesn't feel like we can. And Emergent Strategy posits actually all of these changes, these are something that we need to figure out how we embrace and how we also shape them. So emergent strategies really, life moves towards life, longing moves towards longing. And if we're not also organized towards what we really want and what we long for, we will always settle into just reacting and trying to stop something bad from happening. The trick of this book is that everything you need to know is on pages 41 and 42 and on page 50. If you just read those two pages, or you can look at page 15, page 15 also basically has the entire thesis, everything about the book is right there. So this Octavia Butler quote, all successful life is adaptable, opportunistic, tenacious, interconnected, and fecund. Understand this, use it, shape God. So from that, I would say emergent strategy is learning how to be fractal. Small scale reflects a large scale how to be adaptive in right relationship to change, but also with intention. Because if you just change all the time, you're just changing all the time, you're just a mess, you're just a leaf blown in the wind. But changing with an idea of like, oh, I'm a bird, I'm trying to get to Mexico for my migration, a storm came, how do I still get myself to Mexico? Then nonlinear and iterative, resilient, being in a practice of transformative justice, which I think we are just beginning to understand what transformative justice is or could be for us as a species. And then interdependent and decentralized, and always creating more possibilities. One of my favorite examples right now from the nat- you know, sort of the world of nature has been in this flooding that's been happening with the hurricanes, watching how ants have come together to survive. Um, and they form, they basically create a foundation of their own bodies, like a bottom layer of their own bodies that then other ants climb on top of and climb on top of until they create this floating mound that then is able to make sure that the majority of them survive until they come across something that is a higher ground. Right now we are drowning in the overwhelm of this political moment and the overwhelm of hard decisions. How do we reach out and hold on to each other knowing that holding on to each other makes us a more stable body that can actually float and not pushing each other down, not you know pushing each other under. Um, one of my favorite examples in the human world is actually the work of Black Lives Matter and the movement for Black Lives and feeling like this was emergent. It's not like someone sat down at a table and was like, I've got it all figured out. I know how we're gonna catalyze black people into their liberation fight and taking direct action right now. That's not what happened. There was just a heartbreak. It really, to me, it grows out of a heartbreak. Like if you look at the original post that Alicia put, it was like, my heart is broken and our lives matter. And that that heartbreak was so catalyzing. Other people were like, yeah, how do we organize ourselves around what we long for and we believe in this moment when everything is telling us we don't matter, but we, we know we do. How do we move that? And that so many people answered that call and that they have really tried to hold like, oh, what does decentralization look like? How do we keep adapting to changing conditions? Things that organically emerge from a real desire and a real longing, those are the ones that catalyze the most other people. They're super compelling. Like when you see someone feeling a real emotion, that's what you want to move towards and and be like, I want to be a part of this. It's not just getting me to sign my name on a petition. It's not just getting me to be a number in the street. 
You actually want me to care about my own life and my children's life. Yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. One thing I say in here several times is what you pay attention to grows. So this administration wants us to put all of our attention on them and I would rather starve them of all of that attention to put all of it on the amazing work that's happening here in Detroit or in Jackson or in the Bay or in all these other places, St. Louis, where people are like, we are figuring it out, we're surviving. Um, and that's what I'm gonna keep doing.